Shalom, dear friends. <laughs> How are you guys? We are so glad to all be back together after the holidays and, and a whole new year in front of us. And we are studying Acts uh, chapter 21. Uh, this channel is Finding Shalom. It's all about finding peace, and we're finding it in the Word of God. Um, and let's dig into Acts 21. However, I have a question I want to ask you guys. <laughs> Um, have you ever had a tearful goodbye? And if so, tell us about it. And if not, tell us about one you've seen. <laughs> you looked at me, okay. <laughs> in, <Bing. laughs> in the career that I was in, I was, I call it fortunate enough to be with people as they were transitioning. Mm -hmm. And I felt that those were tearful yet bittersweet goodbyes. Oh, so they were leaving the facility. Leaving the facility or dying. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> which was bittersweet because yeah. in the field that I was in, a lot of them had bodies that were broken and yeah. diseased. And there's such precious souls that you knew that they were going to go directly to the Lord. Yeah. And so... Even though I had created such a strong bond and a relationship with them, it was really very bittersweet and, and yet terrible yeah. goodbyes. I mean, they got, to, as soon as they were in heaven, they could walk. They could, yeah. yeah and talk. they could uh, speak and communicate and understand. Yeah, and, but yet yeah. sad. Oh, sad. that is a, a tearful, bittersweet goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was so wonderful for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. yeah. I got one. When my mom uh, had her... Uh, heart attack and when uh, mm -hmm. one of the times that I actually flew down there um, into Prom Springs to uh, to go visit her uh, when I had to fly back is when that was a rough goodbye because I didn't know if I'd see my mom alive again. Yeah. Did yeah. she take you to the airport? No. Um, no. So you said goodbye at the, no, at the house? No, Michael, Michael drove. Oh, wow. You got to remember that was quite a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, so he drove and she was in the passenger side and I was in the back. Wow. <clears throat> when they picked me up and then when they took me back to the Palm Springs airport. That would be a hard there. one to, to uh, possibly not see your parent again. <clears throat> yeah, because you, you never know. You know, we all have an expiration date. We don't know when yeah. that is. It could be when we're young. It could be when we're old. Mm -hmm. Middle ground. You just don't know. So that mm -hmm. was that was a tough one. But thank God she's now here, up here with us. Mm -hmm. So we get to see her all the time. So that's good. Yeah. But the tearful goodbye was when I didn't know if I was going to see her again. You always have that. Well, first, you don't know if the plane's going to crash and she's not going to see me. <laughs> but you don't know if you're going to yeah, see her again. Yeah. A so lot of goodbyes are like that. That was a rough one. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I actually didn't think until you had said that that we have said two permanent goodbyes this year and that's my my mom and your stepdad yeah. and those were hard but actually the one that came to mind right away was um when we left california to come up to idaho and mm -hmm. we were going where we didn't i had never been to idaho and we packed up everything we owned or just enough we had some in storage and just enough in the back of a old 73 uh suburban yeah that's correct wow. that barely Good made memory. it barely mm -hmm. made it yeah. <laughs> and put our little toddlers buckled them in and we had only given our parents about less than two weeks notice <laughs> that we were leaving um and uh just your mom buckling the kids in and crying and um, us kind of walking away from our whole life, <laughs> you know, um, and saying goodbye to all our family and friends. That's the one that I think sticks out the most to me because it was such a transition, you know, and oh, yeah. uh, we didn't know what the future held. Yeah, it definitely was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> Too many goodbyes. Yeah, I mean, when you break up with a boyfriend, oh. you have those kind of uh, teary goodbyes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just with your 
friends mm -hmm. that you say like they either move or yeah. you've had a spat and you're just no longer friends and you you still mourn that yeah. it's still a, a time of mourning because you're you're losing some you know mm. closeness that you had now um, you're bringing up all the <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> ones were when my son was in prison and we'd go visit and you'd have to say goodbye and it was really hard yeah really hard mm -hmm. but you know at least you get to see him and yeah. talk to him it's not a permanent goodbye but mm -hmm. it's still a I don't I want to take you home with me right now yeah <laughs> type of thing <laughs> so there's there's a lot when you really start thinking about it there's a lot of mm -hmm. Pets and things like that. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, too many. Yeah. Nice question. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Well, the same thing happened to Paul, and, you know, he's kind of on this farewell tour, so to speak, and as he knows that he wants to head back to Jerusalem, he knows it's probably the last time he sees all of these people and so um, you know right before our chapter he actually called um, in 20 um, he called the, the elders from um, Ephesus right and said hey I'm in Mal Maltus 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 I'm in Maltus and um, come you know I'm gonna I'm gonna sail away and they were wanted to say goodbye to him so much that they traveled, you know, and they didn't have cars like we did, you know, they quickly traveled as fast as they could on foot um, and got there to say goodbye. And so we saw that tearful farewell from the Ephesians. Um, so that's where we pick up. So let's go ahead and open up to Acts chapter 21. Do that. So um, if somebody wants to read me um, 20, 36 through Acts uh, 21, 16. So that's like that whole paragraph. It depends on your Bible. When Paul had finished speaking, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them most was his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. After we had torn ourselves away from them, we put out to sea and sailed straight to Kos. The next day we went to Rhodes and from there to Patera. We found a ship crossing over to Phoenicia, went on board and set sail. After sighting Cyprus and passing to the south of it, we sailed on to Syria, where we landed in Tyre, where our ship was to unload its cargo. We sought out the disciples there and stayed with them seven days. Through the Spirit, they urged Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. When it was time to leave, we left and continued our way. All of them, including wives and children, accompanied us out of the city, and there on the beach we knelt to pray. Mm -hmm. After saying goodbye to each other, we went aboard the ship, and they returned home. We continued our voyage from Tyre and landed at... Tolmasis, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed with them for a day. Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. After we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, The Holy Spirit says, 
In this way, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. After this, we started on our way up to Jerusalem. Some of the disciples from Caesarea accompanied us and brought us to the home of Manasseh, where we were to stay. He was a man from Cyprus and one of the early disciples. Okay, right there. So we have a lot of traveling. We have a lot of goodbyes. <laughs> and, uh, wow, what do you guys see in this section? Like, what really stands out to you? Well, that there were people with spiritual gifts of prophecy. Oh, yeah. And some of them are women. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's neat, huh? And that they warned uh, Paul not to go, or they pleaded with Paul not to go, but yeah. he knew what his mission was, and he felt compelled by God to, to finish it. And that they weren't necessarily giving him bad advice, it was just a different perspective. They were afraid of what was going to happen. Yeah, I, I did see that in some of the stuff we watched, yeah. um, that... You know, some people say, well, well, if the Spirit told them, they were urged by the Spirit to tell them, don't go. And then, you know, he's urged by the Holy Spirit to go. Um, you know, why is there a conflict in what the Spirit says? You know, so mm -hmm. how do we know which one is God's voice? Or is that two different things? Or is it the same thing? I think Paul was hearing from the Lord. I think they just were begging him not to go. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. they were not, no matter what the Lord told them, I think they were not yeah. wanting to see him go and die. Yeah, I or think that they that saw killed. in the spirit <clears throat> that he was going to be captured, and their viewpoint of that is, you don't want to go there. Right. And he probably saw the same thing and said, I'm going forward, right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes that's why God doesn't show us the future. I don't know if I knew I was going to be put in prison and captured. Would I go? <laughs> Some of the stuff I was reading talked about him also kind of being a little bit of a martyr right there, saying, I'm ready. I'm ready uh -huh. to die for this. Uh -huh. It's like, but that's not where God really wanted him to be. He wanted him to be in Ephesus to continue with the people uh -huh. in Ephesus. But my, the thing that stood out to me was why was it so important to put in there that this guy had four daughters that were virgins that prophesied. Uh -huh. And so it brought, so I was, researched it a little bit and it, yeah. it was prophesied back in Joel 2.28 oh. where it said, I will pour out my spirit on all the flesh, your sons and daughters, daughters will, will prophesy. prophesy. So it fulfilled that prophecy. That's why it was put oh, in there. Oh, wow. yeah. And and the thing is, we're used to Jesus fulfilling all the prophecies. You know, we're always like, oh, that's from here, that's from here. I didn't even think to look back at that. Being... Well, it was just like, it was a one-liner, but it had, why was it so important that he put it in there? Yeah. <laughs> that was why, because it fulfilled mm -hmm. what Joel had said or saw or yeah. was told from a prophecy that's that's interesting yeah. yeah that's really cool well um i kind of had noted you know like how do we hear god's voice or how do we know we're hearing god's voice um like if we're praying how do we know god's telling us to move forward in something or to stay back in something you know what are some ideas that you guys know Oh, this is from the Lord. I don't know. I really struggle with that. And it's, I don't know, I guess I haven't gotten to the point mm -hmm. of the, you know, where God comes on calm seas and stuff and you, you hear him. But it's like, okay, did I really understand that right? Uh -huh. Is that really what God wants me to do? Did I, is that God or is that just me thinking? Yeah. You know, it's really hard. 
Yeah. To Especially if it's something that could go either way. Biblic like, biblically, it's sound either way. Yeah. You know, it's like, how do you hear where to go? Um, how did we hear to come here to Idaho? I was just thinking about because that. We, <clears throat> because we prayed that if God wanted us to come up here, he'd open the doors. Yeah. That's what we prayed for. We prayed for open doors. And if it's not something that he wants us to do, that he would close all the doors. And he opened every door, including the highway, mm -hmm. for us to get up here. That was... The job I came up here for 30. was the service guy that was just getting gas. He just so happened to have his leg down. His car just so happened to be one of the ones yeah. where the license plate flips down and the gas, the gas yeah. hookup is on, behind the license plate. And a girl came up behind him. <clears throat> Instead of hitting the brakes, she hit the gas. Oh, gosh. He jumps onto his bumper, but he left his one leg down, and it broke his leg. Mm. So thus, they're out of a service tech. And the I county, the county fair was getting ready to happen, and they needed me up here as soon as possible. Yes. So that was an open door. Let's back up, because it just flashed through my eyes. I was like, I can't even remember how it all played. But didn't we? Weren't we so desperate and and wanting God to direct us? And didn't we both get on our knees? Mm -hmm. Which is one of the first we times we will. ever got on our knees together. Yeah, and we prayed for His will. And, we asked and then it Lord. all, it just went boom, 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 boom. Yeah, because my grandmother, she, when a long time ago, my mom was raised in one of yeah. the towns east of here. Mm -hmm. So I knew that my grandmother lived over there. So mm -hmm. I called her, remember? And then I started yeah. talking to her, and she's like, well, honey, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So then that guy broke his leg, and I just so happened to call mm -hmm. and ask them. Yeah, it just went boom, 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 and they said, how yes, fast can you get up here? And we, we said, can you here. give us two weeks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're like, I think God wants us to move. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So um, it was it was definitely, you want to go outside? Outside? <laughs> She's like, please. <laughs> okay. Don't trip. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, too, other things are, you know God's voice is never going to contradict the Bible. And most of the time, he does speak through the Bible and his scriptures. So a lot of times, hearing his voice just has to be with you are in it all the time. And you start to hear him directing you. And then when you hear his voice, you know, well, it it's biblical. It's going to be okay. I mean, that's not going to give you a direction, like move to Idaho. It doesn't say that anywhere in here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, or for Paul to go to Jerusalem, um, back then, I wonder if the spirit was actually, well, they were prophesying. So they actually probably got visions of, you know, and especially this one. I mean, he was so specific with it. He took his belt and said, this is what's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wish, you know, they'd be coming real specific <laughs> tell me yeah me too <laughs> yeah <That'd be> helpful. <laughs> but also i wonder if it's like a <clears throat> something you can't get rid of you just feel pulled well down in the footnotes are 21 10 it says uh, evidently the prophet named agabus says evidently he held the office of prophet as philip held the office of evangelist this is the same prophet who had been in antioch prophesying the coming famine in jerusalem some 15 years earlier Mm. So he prophesied the famine. Okay. And then he just prophesied. So he was over correct, Paul. you know. And what mm -hmm. do they say about a prophet? You know, the way to tell a, a prophet. If there's any. If, uh, if what is it? If false. one of if one of them doesn't come true, then yeah. Or is false, then mm -hmm. you have a false prophet. So, one of the ways to hear from God is through the counsel of other people mm -hmm. and the wisdom of other people. Mm -hmm. But still, you have to maintain your own relationship with the Lord. You do. So you know it's correct. Because what if somebody says, you know what? God told me right. that you, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, God said that. And then you go and do it. I think that God never tells something to you through somebody else unless he's first told it to you. Right. And then I think that he then verifies it. You're like, I heard that 
a second time I've heard it now a third time you know mm -hmm. I was reading the Bible and I really felt God telling me whatever and then you know something else is brought up and then something else is brought up and you're like okay I'm <laughs> hearing it three times but I don't think that you know somebody walking up to you and telling you something and it's just out of the blue yeah that's dangerous yeah. <laughs> yeah that's like, what God are you serving? <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. have to hear it from the Lord first. Mm -hmm. And then they can validate or confirm what you already yeah. know. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's just an, an urge mm -hmm. or a, a nudging. Um, and, you know, I think about Jay and I had, I had an actual, I, I, I'm not a vision person, so, but I actually had one vision and it was to adopt Andrew. And it was the farthest thing from my mind, but I was praying for him to find a good home and a good family. And God instantly put that in my head and I was like, no, you know? And then after that, every time I, um, you know, searched the scriptures, it just kept coming back up and coming back up. And I'm like, so I told him, we need to pray about it. I really think that, uh, you know, God is telling us that we need to, um, you know, adopt Andrew. And he's like, well, if you really think it, maybe, maybe it's true. So we prayed about it. So then we, so you go from, okay, I think this is what, then you go to, let's get on our knees. Okay, God, is this from you? And then we just kept getting confirmations with sermons or stuff. And we didn't tell anybody for a while. Yeah, we kept it to ourselves. Yeah, don't tell Cause anybody because we they'll... We weren't sure if we should say anything. They'll swelter that <laughs> right away. Yeah. But then, um, when we did tell, okay, we're going through the motions, we are going to adopt this boy, um, that one pastor came to us, mm -hmm. and him and his wife, and they said, can we come to your house and sit down with you because we really feel like we need to warn you. And we think this is from God. And they came with, don't do it. It's a warning. And then we had to go, <laughs> you know, God gave me a vision. We prayed about it. We really feel strong about it. And when God tells you to do something, you know, they were warning because they were warning us of all the bad that could happen, you know? Because they experienced a the completely bad. different scenario. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Not that, but it all, we experienced a lot of bad, but we were like, Okay, but if God told us to do it... If God tells you to do something, you do it. He's going to give you the strength yeah, to do it. and he did. Yeah, and that's what I've been holding up to him. I'm like, you you told us to do it, <laughs> so you got to follow through on the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. And he will. He will. <laughs> he will. Yeah. So, yeah. Anything else on that section before we go into our next little bit here? Okay, if somebody will read. Um, I do oh. like how Paul says, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? Yeah. <sighs> and then he reassured them that not only is he ready to be bound, but also die for Jesus. So, I mean, he, he That's was... bold. He, oh, he had a boldness. Bold. He had a boldness for sure. Yeah. Okay, if somebody from our Bible study group came and said... God's telling me to go into this scenario, and we see from God that it's going to be kind of a, a bad deal. Do we try to stop them? Because <laughs> we're like, no, don't go. You know, like, okay, so they're just getting on a ship, like t t Titanic. <laughs> God says, I want you to get on the Titanic, you know, to somebody. And uh, we're like, and we see it in a dream. God told them to go, but we see that the whole ship is going to sink. So we're going to react as, don't go, you're going to die. Uh, we would wonder, <laughs> they heard him right. Yeah. And they would wonder we, too. We know the outcome would happen. Yeah. Although the the captain didn't help things at all anyway. Yeah. When, when you make a statement that not, not, not even God can sink this ship, <laughs> and then God takes the ship out. So yeah. you can't you can't mock God it, and not think He's not going to take care of business. But wouldn't it be just like God to go ahead and send one of His people into the middle of that 
so that they could be the one that got on the boat to save the certain person that he wanted to save? Oh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, that's a big, deep scenario, but... <laughs> well, that's like the people at our church that had the tour set to go to Israel. Oh. And I'm looking at him going, <laughs> I'm not having any <laughs> prophesying or anything. It's just like, no. <laughs> yeah, and this is before the war that they were planning it, or is it now they're still it planning right it? Before, wasn't it? Right it was right before. It was before they uh -huh. took before Hamas took the hostages. Yeah, it yeah. was before Sukkot. Mm -hmm. So they took it at Sukkot. So they've been planning it since last year sometime. Okay. Wow. And Obviously, it's not a good hot spot to go visit. Yeah. 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 They canceled the trip. Yeah, so. I bet. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Like, are you sure you want to go to Israel right now? <laughs> and at the same time, what if they were the ones stuck in, you know, and they could bring a bunch of pe people to Jesus right before the death yeah. or something? Yeah. There's a, oh, what is, <coughs> what is the missionary? Um, Jim? Is it? Um, Which one? It's the one where uh, he was in the aviation and uh for mission aviation mission avi i don't know if he was officially mission aviation but he would fl him and his crew would fly into the island mm -hmm. elliot uh jim elliot and his wife um you're talking the one that died him yeah and his crew that died so here they are on a mission from god they've been told to go there and they take he takes his whole family his little i think he had a a wife and a child and they're on this part of the island and they and they end up the guys fly over to try to uh, witness to the tribes and they end up killed and the tribe kills them the yeah. but later his uh, wife comes back and she goes over there and she witnesses and turns the entire island to Jesus so even though they killed her husband yeah and yeah that's mercy and grace in a huge way yeah mm -hmm. so i mean was it god's will for him to go maybe he was a sacrificial lamb to <laughs> save the whole island yeah <laughs> sometimes he does crazy things and uh -huh. it has a great outcome yeah so yeah Woo. so Okay, we're going to Jerusalem. Let's go ahead and read uh, verses 17 through 26, if somebody wants to do that. When we arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers received us warmly. The next day, Paul and the rest of us went to see James, and all of the other elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in detail what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. When they heard this, they praised God, then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to our customs. What shall, what, what shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come so do what we tell you. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay their expenses, so that they can have their heads shaved. Then everybody will know there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. The next day Paul took them in and purified himself along with them. Then he went to the temple to give notice of the date when the days of purification would end, and that offering would be made for each of them. Okay, so let's kind of break it down, and what have you guys learned about all these things? First of all, there he's in Jerusalem. And he goes to meet with um, James and all the elders. And, sorry, <laughs> um, James is Jesus' brother. 
and uh, James is actually running the church in Jerusalem. Um, and then, so they come up with this idea. Um, so, what? first of all, let's just establish what all of the Jews are saying, all the zealous Jews are saying about um, about Paul. Well, they're, tell, they're saying, well, in fact, yeah, they're saying that he is n telling people not to follow the law, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they're like, no, that's not okay with us. Yeah. So he wasn't <clears throat> telling people not to follow the law, but he was saying if you're a Gentile, you don't have to go and try to fulfill all the laws to try to become a Christian because God's grace is enough, mm -hmm. right? Through mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, like he's not telling the Jews, all the Jews that have been doing all of the ceremonies and all that kind of stuff, fine, keep doing that. But hey, here's Jesus, by the way, yeah. you know? So he's not even really doing that. Yeah, but they, they are blaming him. <laughs> he's even going through the rituals which he didn't have to, uh -huh. in order to make them feel more comfortable about the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you guys so, think about that? What did you say? I'm sorry. He was, uh, Paul was going through the purification rituals. He didn't need to, to prove his, po his point, but he did it to help the make Jewish... Make everybody comfortable. Jewish people, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was waiting for an open door. Uh-huh to speak the word, and he just wasn't getting it. <laughs> yeah. So we have to meet people halfway sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Paul actually wrote that in one of his, do you know what? Uh, you're talking about the, the verse that says, let us come together and reason? No. Um, I'm going to have to or Google what it. Are you, you're um, looking for a, a different specific He verse? basically says to do this, like, now I can't even explain it. Like uh, Paul, like he changed, he, he'll he eat, he'll restrain from eating meat to idols to make those people more comfortable. Or he'll do this for those, even um, though he doesn't need to. I remember what is that? that? I don't remember where it's at though. Let me see if I can find it. So he's basically make, coming into their world to make them more comfortable with him so that he can establish yeah. a way to get yeah. the word through to them. It seems like he's, he's coming in with um, a little softer landing instead of harsh and saying, you need to quit doing that or you're going to go to hell. Right. You know, like fire, hell, and brimstone. I think he's lightening the load a little bit into, or coming in for a soft landing and going, here, this is... This is what I'll do. And like she said, I'll meet you halfway, or you said it. Um, and that is going to get him a lot farther than busting out the shield right. and the sword. And maybe that's why he's doing this. I don't even know how to pose the question for Google. Google can't even help me. Let me see. Well, that's amazing in <laughs> itself. <laughs> I don't know how to how to um, word it. Word it. I do. It's not the I do what I don't want to do. It's no, not that one. No, that's the tongue twister itself. Let me, yeah, let me it's. Look um, gosh, you guys can keep what about chat First from. Corinthians. What about? Let me see. Nine, nineteen through twenty-two. Ah, well, this is something maybe. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. He always <laughs> is talking like <laughs> to the weak. Okay, here go down to twenty-two. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. So he's not talking about going in and sinning. 
he's not going to a bar and then getting drunk with the people to make them come to God. But he might enter into a bar and he might be like, hey, let's have a conversation. I'm not going to sin while I'm in there, but I want to be that. I'll reach you because you need to be reached. Um, maybe, I'm trying to think what today would be. He might go into um, a, a temple that's or a, a church that's really like has all these rituals and stuff like that, even though he doesn't feel like, I don't need the rituals to be saved. I'm, I'm saved by grace. But I want to go in and tell them about grace. So I'm going to sit with them in their environment kind of a thing. Is that kind of what it is? It's kind of like he's going to say, okay, if I don't need to go through all the ceremonial stuff, but in order for you guys to be comfortable so I can tell you about Jesus, <laughs> then I'll go ahead and go through all the ceremony. And, you know, it's also part of his heritage, too. So it's just like his traditions, going and celebrating Christmas or celebrating, you know, or, you know, it's like all his childhood stuff. I'm like, yeah, I don't need it to go to heaven, but let's go do it, <laughs> you know, just to make him happy, right? So do you think it's crazy that uh, the leader said go do that? No, I think it was a smart move. <laughs> you think it was a... <laughs> yeah. It didn't work, yeah. though. It didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> well, no, but... <laughs> he tried every day. It didn't work. <clears throat> but he was willing. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't matter what he did. Yeah. They were already offended and ready to take him down. Yeah. So, what do you think... Um, you know, what are these rituals? What's the vows? Do you guys know what any of those are? Are you talking about Nazarite vows? Yeah, I no. think it doesn't say Nazarite vow. But that's what you're talking about. But I'm pretty sure that he was taking a Nazarite vow. And I'll just, <coughs> for everybody's uh, sake I of being I able to look it up. here somewhere that it was Nazar. Yeah, it's because it has all the characteristics of a Nazarite vow. So a Nazarite vow, you'll find it in Numbers uh, chapter 6, 1 through 21. And there were three things. Um, you couldn't um, have no wine, no grapes, no raisins for the time period that you're taking that vow. Um, no razor could cut or touch your head. So a lot of times what they would do right before or right after the Nazarite vow is they would fully shave their heads. So then they would enter into the Nazarite vow and not have to worry about it. You know, their hair could grow as long as it wanted. So a lot of them will shave right before or as soon as the, the vow's over, then they shave. Yeah, it says, during the entire period of his vow of separation, no razor may be used on his head. He must be uh, holy until the period of his separation till the Lord is over. He must not let the hair of his head grow long throughout this period of separation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Oh, and they couldn't Lots be around a dead body. <clears throat> yeah. So, like, you hope that while you're taking that vow, none of your relatives um, pass away because <laughs> mm -hmm. you can't go to their funeral. Um, but, and you could take a Nazarite vow, either they would take it either for a whole lifetime, you could be a Nazarite that took the vow for your entire life, or you could have, be a Naz, uh, take the Nazarite vow for just a period of time, you know, like 10 days, 7 days. I think he took it for 7 days. Um, what does it say at the very beginning of that chapter, like right when it starts? Uh, one, uh, the six. Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, if a man or a woman wants to make a uh, special vow, a vow of separation to the Lord as a Nazarite, he must abstain from wine and any other fermented drink and must not drink vinegar made from wine or any mm -hmm. other fermented and then it drink. it goes on. He must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins. Um, as long as he is so, a Nazarite, he must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seed or skin. So it might be like a, a certain time that you kind of set yourself apart. Um, when we, uh, in the Sunday night group, were actually going through numbers, 
Um, we studied the Nazarite vow, and then a bunch of us decided we wanted to do it, I think, for 21 days or something. I can't remember. We saw, like, a video where um, we kind of just set some time aside where uh, we fasted from certain things, uh, like uh, candy and, you know, like, we just tried to set ourselves more for God and then just try to maybe put away some entertainment. Um, yeah, like TV or yeah. whatever. Anything that we like to eat or drink, like candy or mm -hmm. back in the day soda. Yeah, so it was kind of a fun like 21 days where we just kind of set it aside and all prayed as a group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a lot of fun when we just said, you know what, we're going to do a Nazarite vow. Um, not officially, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, no shave November. I mean, that's yeah. a Nazarite vow almost. I did that one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think I shaved him once. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that probably stems from some of that. Um, you know, so basically I'm wondering if some of these people, does it say that they were Jews or maybe they were Gentiles that wanted to enter into the Jewish religion. This just says, as for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the. I'm uh, looking before that, like when. Farther up. When they said that there were four men. There are four men with us who have made a vow. So it. There goes the dog. <laughs> There are four men with us that have made a vow um, to these men. Okay, so they could have been Jewish men that just decided to do a vow for a, a short period of time. Or, um, even now, modern day, you can actually uh, get into Judaism. There's some people that are really into Judaism, and so they're not born Jews. And so then they want to go through all the things to become, so they can be part of that community. And... Um, they uh, they have certain things they have to learn, and they have certain prayers they have to learn, um, and then they go through all these rituals and all these questionnaires with the, the rabbi, and then they have this ceremony where uh, they go to the mitzvah, which is a big pool, and they do kind of a, almost like a baptism, it's a dunking kind of a thing, um, and it's called the purification rite, which is exactly what's going on here. I looked it up, and I actually have like a official definition. <laughs> uh, purification rites, the ritual washing and cleansing and immersion in a mikvah, which is that big pool. Um, if you hear about the Pool of Siloam that they're uncovering right now, that was a mikvah. You always had a giant, anywhere that you have um, a, the temple or anything Jewish, um, they always had these mikvahs. You can always tell a Jewish community by when they dig up mik mikvahs, these pools. And it has to be where they can go in, and then there's steps that come out because they go in dirty and they come out clean uh, spiritually. <laughs> so, yeah, it says um, customs employed in an attempt to reestablish lost purity or to create a higher degree of purity. So that's what they were doing right there. They were not only doing the vow for the shaving, and they probably did seven days without any wine or grapes, or they probably stayed away from dead bodies, which is always good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they probably set themselves apart, you know, for seven days, but before they did that, they had to do the, the ceremonial uh, purification. Mm. Which, little side notes that <laughs> are fun to research. <laughs> Anything else you guys see on that? That any questions or? Okay, let's go ahead and read. Um, let's do twenty-seven, uh, and let's only go to thirty-six because I think I want to save thirty-seven for next week. Twenty-seven to thirty-six. Yeah, just that Paul arrested. When the, seven, when the seven days were nearly over, some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul <laughs> at the temple. They stirred up the whole crowd and seized him, shouting, Men of Israel, help us. This is the man who teaches all this is the man who teaches all men everywhere against our people and our law in this place. And besides he has brought Greeks 
into the temple area and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trophius, the Ephesian, in the city of Paul and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple area. Mm, assuming. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <laughs> the whole city was aroused and the people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple and immediately the gates were shut. While they were trying to kill him, uh, news reached the commander of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the rioters saw the commander and his soldiers, uh, the, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came up and arrested, arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd shouted one thing and some another, and since the commander could not get the truth, get at the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great, he had to be carried by the soldiers. Then uh, the crowd that followed kept shouting away with him. Mm. Oh, boy. Well... Well, that went from a peaceful demonstration to a hostile <laughs> act. So the the, the people <coughs> prophesying were right. Yeah, like you're going into a, a dangerous situation. Um, yeah, what did you guys learn about? What's standing out to you? Well, I did some further research and read some other commentaries and stuff and it talked about how... Um, the Judeans were telling lies. Oh yeah. They were. Told, they told like five big lies. And Do you have them listed? Yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about before, but um, they were saying that Paul taught against the people, but actually he was trying to build them up and strengthen <laughs> them. Yeah. And then they said that he taught against the law, which was not true. He was actually teaching how the law had been fulfilled. Yeah. And they said that he taught against the peace, against the place, which was the temple. I can't read my own writing. And he taught the spiritual heart of what the true temple is. Yeah. Like we're the temple. Mm -hmm. And then it's, and then he, you know, the lie about bringing Greeks into the temple. He really didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, that he was polluting the holy place when it was already actually polluted. <laughs> and then it, I don't and mean the, to laugh, but <coughs> it's true. <laughs> and then he, and then it, they were talking about how this resembled Jesus yeah. before Pilate, mm -hmm. how the mob just was like so, get him, get him, get him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Yeah. that's the same thing. The mob mentality. The, yes, the mob mentality, and how Paul realized what was going on and, de and you know, said the only way I can combat this is with the word. So he continued mm -hmm. his preaching and speaking the word because when the word's around, yeah. they have to flee. Yeah, so, which made a lot of people angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they, they were beating him. Mm -hmm. And like no trial, nothing. It's like a bunch of people say you did something and they just grab you and start beating you. Yes, like and it no was, and that's why the were the soldiers Roman, the Roman soldiers, <coughs> yeah. because he's a he was a Roman, yeah. so they're like, wait, 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 you can't yeah. be doing this. You need to do a a proper. It's mm -hmm. funny because the Romans actually had a little bit more. They were more civilized, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Like, well, we need to, even though I mean, their their methods uh, of crucifixion and all that were horrible. They still at least put people on trial and did the whole, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're not going like, to just grab somebody and stone them. in the streets. <laughs> we just can't do that. <laughs> we are civilized people around here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this was crazy. Um, I really liked what there were. I wrote a couple things from a, uh, one of them was the To Be Like Christ video. Um, he said something, and I had to keep replaying it. I'm like, that is so good. I need to put that on something. He said, it's easier to walk into dangerous situations when you know that Jesus is on your side. That's why Paul had confidence. Because he yeah. knew that 
okay, well, God told me to go here, but if he told me that, Jesus is on my side. And, and he wrote the words, to die is... To live as Christ. To, to live as Christ, gain. to die is gain. And he says, for, for me, for me to live as Christ, to die is gain. I think it's Second like Corinthians. Yeah, let's something. find that one, too. I mean, he wrote a lot of, in his letters to everyone, he wrote a lot of these things. Um, and it said, Paul knew that going to Jerusalem would put him in the den of his enemies. Uh, when we are confident that Jesus is in control of our souls, we know... Uh, we are no longer controlled by fear, mm -hmm. but by conviction. And I was like, that is so good. You know, um, as Christians, we don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear somebody <clears throat> saying, you know, um, what was, uh, what is the school shooting? Where Columbine. The, Columbine, where the well, girl, lot, yeah. he went up to her and he kept asking everybody, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? And she actually said, yes, I'm a Christian, and he shot her. But then her testimony went like crazy because oh, yeah. she had some uh, letters written and some things, and her dad took those around, and uh, people came to Christ all over the place. And even after her death, so as Christians, our death isn't the end. Our death uh, doesn't mean that our testimony is over. Mm -hmm. It actually could be the beginning of something great. And we go to heaven. I mean, <laughs> you're like, sure would be better. No gravity, no, uh, you know, no all the problems we have, <laughs> no pain. <laughs> so, um, and then in Branch Together, um, he asked a really good question. That was, I'll put those in the description, but Branch Together, he put, um, Paul was not willing to compromise. Um, and it says, uh, what has God called you to do that you are not willing to compromise? And are you willing to take the risk to do what God has called you to do? So I want to ask that question. We can, as we wait for Jay to find that. No, the one, I, I, have to the one I think was thinking it's therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, the oldest one and the new has come. So. Well, my that best thing the, uh, is Google. My address was wrong with the, <laughs> Here, with the verse Google I was thinking was. To live is Christ, to die is gain. It is Philippians 1.21. Yeah. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart <laughs> and to be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your prog let's see, with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. <laughs> I can't see. Uh so that through my being with you, again, your boasting in Christ will abound on account of me. So basically, he's saying, if I stay here in the body, I can keep encouraging you. I can keep... Um, keep uh, sharing, witnessing, keep sharing. testimony, mm -hmm. the yeah. whole thing, yeah. But to die is better by far. Like, yeah. I want to go home. There's also <laughs> another verse that talks about... Um, that when you, that a person dying uh -huh. hurts God because you're He wants you here on earth, witnessing for yeah. Jesus Christ for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's precious. The we word don't want to just give up and say, "Well, I just want to go." Yeah, you know, I'm just going to go. You know, um, I I would rather uh, just go to heaven and just give up on life. He's like, "No, while you're here." But you don't have to worry or fear of no, death right? because uh, it's good. <laughs> it's good. So let me ask that question again. What has God called you to do? And you don't have to answer. You can't answer. But think about something even small. What does God call you to do that you are not willing to compromise? 
I have no idea. Something what has he called us to do that we're not willing to compromise? Yeah, do you feel follow like... Him. Follow him. Follow him, yeah. <clears throat> Following him. Not willing to compromise that. Like if somebody came in and said, Jay, yeah. I need you to start, uh, stop being a Christian, and I need you to follow this other idol. Bye. <laughs> or I'll shoot you. Bye. <laughs> Here I am. Take your pick. Head, heart, go for it. Because <laughs> then that's instantaneously with the Lord. I'm like, I'm yeah. good with that. <clears throat> He's called us to be Christians. He's called us to follow Him no matter what the cost. Yeah. I know a lot of people freak out about that, but that's okay. <laughs> In my last few years, it's been. Um, it's funny because, like, I felt like we had a mission. And then we'd get derailed. And if, you know what I mean? It's like when we moved to Idaho, it was like, okay, God is moving us here for something, you know? And it's going to be great. And then we went out into the churches and we couldn't find a church and we couldn't find Christian friends. And it was, we struggled for years. And then we kind of gave up for a little bit. And then we, and then we found a church and then we, became Sunday school teachers and we were on this marriage enriching mission and then we got tripped up and we failed and then we picked ourselves back up a few years later and we said oh God's given us a passion let's do it you know we we started a church you know in the little town over here and and then we came up, up against opposition and it crumbled and then we quit and then you know it's just been like this right and then i i open the shop i pull myself out of, god pulls me out of depression and i'm like okay i'm going we're gonna this shop is gonna be i'm gonna witness to all my employees i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that and then opposition and then you know financially like if i speak about jesus then people you know what I mean? It's And then I cave. And so then when I close the shop, I'm like, okay, this is it. <laughs> okay? You know what? I just really feel God leading me to uh, just really witness, you know, for him and really move forward. And uh, now that I'm closing the shop, I can actually start a YouTube channel and I'm going to move forward. And 10 days after I turn in the keys, our lives crumbled again. <laughs> You know, we had uh, parents with health problems and then death. And, and I feel like I'm at that point of, especially this last two weeks, where I'm just like, I'm going to make a video every day. I'm going to make a video every day. And it's like, I'm not willing to compromise anymore. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to collapse. Well, I think <laughs> in... From much collapsing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing this out there, though. I think... Uh... Our Bible study at our house has been very much from him because we're going on our fifth year. Yeah. And we have not stopped. Is it five years? 2019? Four. Oh, wow. Four or five. It's about five, yeah. Or we're heading into our fifth year. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I totally believe that was from God because we're still going and it's still reaching people. <clears throat> and things have come even, against even it. Even though people, it's ebbs and flows, people will show up for a little bit and they'll leave. And then other people will sh show up and leave. And then other mm -hmm. people, some people are constant. But and we get a little bit of harassment time, from family who are like, for such a time as well, you this, don't, you, know? you can skip Bible study. You know, you don't have to have it every week. Like we can't, it's like, no, we're not compromising. Right. You know, <laughs> we have to keep moving forward, huh? I think uh, when we were going through the health problem with, uh, well, the death of your mom, we held up. Yeah. We had to get that all done. And then the death of my dad, we had to do that. And then um, Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah. And now we're back. Shoot them holidays. <laughs> <laughs> That's just life. That's yeah. part of life. Yeah. It's not something that's yeah. but really stayed, trying to keep you from doing this. We've it's, stayed the course. Is yes, what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. we've stayed the course. I mean, when yeah. you're when you're new to 
to being in the Word with and being with God. There's, you know, there's some things that you have a struggle with giving up. Like I still want to go to the bar and, and party, and or I still want to do this, or I still want to do that. Well, the more, and I have found this true with myself, the more that I'm engaged, mm -hmm. the less I want to do that. Uh, your I desires still, change. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's something I, you know, never mm -hmm. thought would happen, mm -hmm. but it, it has, and it slowly dis dissipates out of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the people too, you know, some of the people that you hang around with. You think you're going to be lifelong friends forever and ever and ever, mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Things come and go. But it's easier to let them go the more you're engaged in the Word, mm -hmm. because it's solid and it'll always be there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good foundation. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, with that compromise, I won't compromise, you know, um, with your non Christian friends. <laughs> <clears throat> they don't really want you to follow this Jesus. And to do that, you have to say, I'm not going to compromise that. That I'm going to keep going to church. I'm going to keep reading the word. I'm going to keep moving forward. That's your, I'm not going to compromise kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. And same with like reading the Bible every day. You know, you're like, oh man, I could really take a nap or I'm too busy. But if you were like, I made a commitment. I'm going to do this. You know, I'm not going to compromise. <laughs> yeah. I have found myself wanting to do that with our John study yeah. for the 21 days. I'm not going to compromise on yeah. that cause, <laughs> because already I feel a change in myself yeah. reading every day about Jesus. Mm -hmm. and it feels really good. Yeah. And, and I've got a lot of things going. kept coming up. You know, like uh, <laughs> there's always things that come up and try to oh, yeah. uh, try to interrupt what you're doing or what God's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I don't get to it till later in the evening, and yeah. you know, I want and I want to do it first thing in the morning because I want to start my day that way. But then we have I have little cousins that come <laughs> and things like that. But every day I'm going to do it every day. Yeah, <laughs> not going to be a good, every other day. I'm person. not. I'm not <laughs> compromising. Yeah, <laughs> I get that because I had even said. Um, before that, I was like, okay, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to guard my mornings. I'm going to make sure that at least in the morning I have that time I'm going to guard it. And right after I said that, like in the next weeks, all of a sudden somebody called and they had happened to have, the only time we could do this doctor appointment is in the morning. And the only time we could do this appointment is in the morning. And by the way, you got to get up early for this. And you got, and I'm like, and then I'm sending you stupid cat pictures <laughs> first thing in the morning. No, <laughs> no I, I won't. I won't look at it. If okay, I, good. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't have. I usually don't have the ringer on. So, Excellent. yeah. So. I thought about that. I'm like, Sarah, what are you doing? You're supposed to leave her alone in the morning. <laughs> no, I just leave. I I turn it off so okay, I can't good. even. Yeah, I have it on. Do not disturb if I need it. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting it on do not disturb. I'm not compromising. <laughs> not even if Sarah sends me the cutest cat picture ever. <laughs> no, my, no, my phone cool. is on do not disturb when that's I'm cool. doing it. <laughs> I need to do that too. <laughs> so. But I think, you know, like, I, people would, I know in the ministry that I go to, they, the leadership gets moved around all the time and it's like I, I'm like how do you do that mm. how do you sit there sit in here and establish all these wonderful friends and then pick up and move uh -huh. every three years or whatever I'm like does it that's what Paul's it's doing it's harder you're it's hard he's on saying your goodbye goodbye uh -huh. goodbye 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the ministry itself moves them around, or do they move because... Well, they, they went into the field to do that. They okay. went through all these classes and became Waycore and Waycore. No, you know when you go into it that you may only be here for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. God may call you over here. Yeah. Or the ministry says, we, you know, you, these are your strong suits in this area need you. Yeah. So I wonder if that keeps you fresh too. It might mm -hmm. because yeah, you can get too I, comfortable. Yes, you know? but what's great is there are places that I will travel. Like I have um, two of my favorite 
leadership people that live in Texas. Mm -hmm. So when I went to my visit my cousin, my nephew, mm -hmm. I was like, hey, what are you doing? And That's I can go awesome. and see him. And you know they're all over the country. <laughs> yep, all over the world. Yeah. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. So even though you have to keep saying goodbye, you're really just making mm -hmm. a larger mm -hmm. network of friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're connected. It's like, yeah. it's wonderful. And the point of a Christian is to witness to those around, feed them discipleship. That's, mm -hmm. you're supposed to have disciples, you disciple them, and then you send them out, and then they have disciples, and then they have disciples, mm -hmm. and they have disciples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun because you run into people that go, oh, I'm, I was in their fellowship. And you're like, aren't they just amazing? <laughs> you know, awesome. and you just, it's like these guys that are traveling. Yeah, you know? that's what, exactly what they were doing. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's really awesome. And that's what the books of, um, is it, what do you call the, all the letters? The epistles? The epistles. Mm -hmm. um, that's what all of that is. It's them getting a, a letter from their leader that was there for maybe a couple months or a couple of years. And he's writing to them going, and they're like, yes, <laughs> he wrote to us. He's encouraging us, you know. Some of them, like, the way, they have the Way magazine that comes out six times a year. And I get excited. Like this one, this January and February, Sam Graham, he was a lieutenant colonel in the Marines. And he wrote, he wrote an article, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to get that magazine oh, that's so, and read that's it. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. It's like, it's like your own little epistles. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, anything else before we close it out? No. <laughs> okay, you guys tell us in the comments what you guys got out of it and answer some of those questions in the comments. Um, we'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And until next week, next week is Acts 22, and it's getting scarier as uh, Paul is going to be kind of in prison for a while. So <laughs> we will see you next week. Uh, shalom, dear friends. Have a wonderful week. Love you guys. <laughs>